Yeah, no, we're record. Okay, it's all good for the audio? Yep. Okay, perfect. Good, good. Go ahead, Tony. Perfect. Thank you. We'll start help. George says it's okay. My name is Constable Tony Bella from the Toronto Police Public Communication Unit. And we have two people here today to speak in regards to the uh, shooting incident that occurred at the DuPont subway station yes, uh, yesterday evening. The first person that will be speaking will be Staff Inspector Mike Earl from the Toronto Police Homicide Squad. He will be updating the Sorry, year got got the so I apologize. Staff Inspector Mike Earl from the Toronto Police Hold Up Squad. And he will be updating the media in regards to the shooting investigation. And, uh, as well as Andy Byford, the Chief Operating Officer, will be answering questions for him. I'll turn the podium over to the Staff Inspector. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, and uh, thank you for attending today's uh, news conference. Uh, the uh, the Hold Up Squad is investigating a series of robberies, the latest one that occurred on Sunday the 26th of February at 7.20 p.m. at the DuPont subway. The individual in this uh, robbery, we believe, also committed two previous robberies, one on Saturday the 11th of June at 9.20 p.m., and approximately four months later on Sunday the 2nd of October, at 7.55 p.m. In each robbery, the individual male, who I describe as a male white in the area of 35 to 50 years of age, with a heavy build, uh, there's no apparent accent. He's uh, dressed in dark clothing in each robbery, and he's armed with a revolver handgun. He carries a, a satchel or a pack, a pack of some sort when the demand is made for money. On uh, Sunday evening, when he approached the, the victim in this robbery, he made a demand for cash, pulling out the handgun, uh, pointing it at the victim and threatening to shoot the victim if he did not comply. The victim had a conversation with the male suspect and no money exchanged hands, at which point in time the suspect was leaving the premises, walking away from the victim, and he turned and cowardly fired three shots through the glass, two of them striking the victim once in the neck and once in the shoulder. The uh, suspect then fled the, uh, the subway along DuPont Street north on Spadina. He was chased by a civilian witness and one of my purposes here today is to try and get these witnesses. There's more than one witness out there that has either given chase or observed this individual running north on Spadina from DuPont. We need these individuals to come forward and to call the holdup squad so we can interview these people so they can provide better descriptions, direction of travel on this case. At this point in time, my understanding is the victim is stable, he's been operated on, and he should make a good recovery. Again, we're looking for the public's assistance. We can call Crime Stoppers. We call the Holdup Squad at 808 7350 with any information whatsoever on this case. Can you tell us uh, about the pictures that we're looking at, when these pictures were taken, and what's going on in them? The, for, the picture, the, uh, the one picture he's, uh, that's taken right there that you're seeing happen on the 11th of June, he's wearing a medical mask over his face, a blue, light blue medical mask over his face, disguising it. He's pointing a handgun at the collector, making a demand for cash. That's this from the 11th of June, with the medical mask and the ball cap, dark clothing. That one there is from the uh, 2nd of October. He's wearing a full face balaclava, similar to the one that happened that he was wearing on uh, Sunday, the 26th of uh, February. Again, he's pointing a handgun, a revolver handgun, at the victim and making a demand for cash. In the first two robberies, there was no injuries, uh, and the <coughs> suspect fled with a small amount of cash. How much? Don't disclose that. So, where do you think he started in the subway? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that puzzles us because this is the only collector booth that he's robbed. And each time it's approximately four months between each robbery. And he's wearing uh, similar clothing and armed with the same handgun. So just to be clear, the two previous robberies were at the same station? Same station. Was it the same collector? Not to my knowledge, no. So it was the same booth? Same booth. Same booth. It's the DuPont's, but I am. And again, approximately four months apart, we have no other robberies that we can attribute this suspect to. Uh, 
It just uh, and there was no violence other than the the threat of violence in the first two robberies until Sunday's robbery, where this person is committed this cowardly act. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you can you speak to you may have mentioned? I'm not sure if I heard you. Uh, accomplices? Are we looking at other people in terms of getaway? We have no information that there's anyone else involved in this robbery. We have a. In, in uh, at least two of the robberies, the individual seen going north on Spadina on foot from the scene. And on Sunday evening, he was actually chased by a, a citizen who observed what was taking place. And we're looking for that citizen to come forward so we can interview him. Did you guys receive any 911 calls, or were you just alerted by the style of the alarm that went off? My understanding is we did receive 911 calls. So I can't comment any further on that. Was there a difference in how the collector responded in uh, yesterday's incident as opposed to the two previous robberies? Well, in yesterday's instance, there was no cash turned over to the suspect. Uh, the first two robberies, uh, there was cash turned over to the suspect and the suspect left. Uh, this one here, I've watched the video. Uh, they're still working on it uh, at INET, but uh, the, uh, the suspect is actually leaving. Uh, and he turns several feet away from the collector's booth when he turns and unprovoked fires the gun into the, into the glass at the collector. So he shot it through the glass, shot the collector through the glass? Yes. Do you know if the collector flat out refused to hand over money or what circumstances led to no cash being handed over? I'm not going to comment on that. Is there usable video or stills from yesterday's event? The stills that I've seen so far are very similar to what you're looking at here. Uh, again, we're still working on it and we, are, we obtained several videos from the area from where the direction that he left the subway until we were last seen, and we're reviewing those. If I get better stills or something that's identifiable, I'm more than willing to share it with the media because we really want to identify this person and get the public support in trying to identify this individual and get him off the streets. You said in the first two incidents there were threats of violence. Did he say, if you don't give me the money, I'm going to shoot you, something along those lines? Yes. Did he say the same thing last night? Yes. Yes, that's correct. He threatened to shoot the individual who did not comply. What time did the other two incidents happen? The first one was around, uh, uh, which was the 7th, 11th of June, happened at uh, 9.26 p.m. And is that the one with the, that's the one that's far away? That's the one with the uh, medical mask. With the medical mask in June? That's correct. And the other one happened at 7.55 p.m., which is the 2nd of October. So the June happened at 7.55 or the October one? June was uh, 9.26 p.m. October 7.55 p.m. Yes. Is there something about the layout of the station that makes the booth obscure, or is there something that you're doing in the station design? I have no information that this booth is any different than any other subway booth. So do you suspect he looks at the jump and he lives in the area, maybe? There very well could be. It could be a comfort zone for this individual. That's why he keeps going back to the same location. It's, it's something that we have to look at, and it's something that hopefully the public can give us a, a hand in identifying and solving. Stop, Inspector. I have a question for Mr. Byford. Can Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Byford, George Long Jones from CP24. We're, we're live on here. Uh, there's uh, some discrepancy in some information I've gotten today regarding uh, bulletproof glass or not bulletproof glass at particular booths. Uh, former TTC Chair Adam Jim Roney told one of our reports today that there are, in terms of upgrades and improvement to security and safety, there are, according to him, some booths, collector booths, that have bulletproof reinforced glass. Speaking earlier though today to Bob Kinnear, the president of the, the union, Local 113, he says, to his knowledge, there isn't anything like that in the system. Just uh, sheet glass with that sort of film reinforcement. Do you know, uh, can you clarify that? Uh, my understanding, and uh, maybe Brad can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is it's not bulletproof glass. glass that's, to say, uh, that's not to say it's, it's just regular glass, it's strengthening glass. Um, we are um, looking at uh, the possibility of bulletproof glass amongst many Plus, amongst many other uh, possibilities as a result of the review this morning. And he, this is the third time this particular subway station has been robbed. This particular individual threatened violence. We don't know if it was a gun before. And now, this final time, someone was shot uh, and hurt. How come it took three times to look at an improvement to security measures? How come security measures weren't looked at it being increased in this particular subway station after the first or even after the second time? Is here. Okay, well, I think it's important to understand that uh, we have taken measures to improve collective security. Uh, we have installed CCTV uh, imagery camera to cameras that specifically point at the collector's booths. We have limited the amount of cash 
that collectors have uh, within the booth so that we uh, try to minimize the risk by taking away the temptation. Uh, and we've also installed the alarms that we, the, the inspector referred to earlier. That they, the, the CCTV and the alarm both worked last night. Uh, you make a point about DuPont. Obviously, uh, it is a concern that that's happened again there. Uh, amongst many other things, we've improved uh, or increased the uh, visibility of my transit officers, but also uh, the trans uh, Toronto Police Service are doing active patrols, particularly at DuPont today, to give reassurance to staff and to customers. What would the cost of bulletproof glass be on the assembly upgrades? I'm sure you'd say if this cost comes down to time. What about the ballpark so far? I, I couldn't possibly say, but one of the measures that we are considering or talking about so as a result of our review this morning is to have a look at the practicalities around bulletproof glass just to uh, make sure that we are addressing every possible option to maximize the security of our collectors. What do we know about? Him? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, he has worked with the TTC for around 10 years. Uh, he is an, uh, sorry, he's an experienced collector. Um, he, uh, his, uh, much of my knowledge, he's never been involved in an, ex in an incident like this uh, before. The good news is uh, he's in good hands. He's down at uh, St. Mike's Hospital. Um, the guy, the surgeon.